Okay, welcome to Spore. Uh, this is a very difficult game to demo in 20 minutes. Uh, we actually have many different levels in the game. We have the cell game, the creature game, tribal, city, civ, and space. We're going to show you two levels today, kind of in depth. But first we're going to start with one of the editors. Each one of these game levels has an associated editor with it. Almost everything you're going to see in this game is tradable by the player. And this is the creature editor in the game. We start with this torso. It's a very clay-like thing. You can kind of grab, manipulate, uh, shrink, expand. Use the mouse wheel to sculpt it. And so this kind of becomes the starting point for our creature. So I'm going to grab this thing and kind of inflate this a bit, drag it around. And what you can do in this editor is influencing not just the look of your creature, but also the way it's going to perform in the world. So I'm going to start here, put a couple of legs from the leg palette here on our creature, and then some feet from the feet palette. You'll notice there are different columns here. A lot of these parts also have morph channels, so they can sit here and kind of distort them. Each part has a number of different kind of uh, directions it can be bent and manipulated in. Now we're going to put some eyes on from the sense palette. Uh, this is pointing the eyes. Mouths, depending on the mouth we pick, our creature will be a carnivore, herbivore, or omnivore. This will also determine the voice that our creature has in the game, whether it's a bird-like voice or insect-like, etc. Now let's give this guy some arms. Now this is designed so that you know almost anybody can come up and make something really interesting in about two or three minutes. We want players to feel like basically they can create something that a Pixar artist would create over weeks. Now this is my just basic creature that I've thrown together. Now we go into the texturing step. The program will actually analyze the topology of this creature, and I'm going to make this guy kind of dark green and try some different textures. Each one of these is a different procedural texture that we're applying to the creature. And it actually kind of knows where to shadow it, where the legs are, where the back is. We can also combine overlays on top of this. So this is an overlay layer that I'm going to make kind of yellow. And we can try different types of stripes on our creature. And when we're ready, we can basically go into test mode now and see how our creature is going to Now at this point, the computer is actually analyzed by built in the game. And it's procedurally animating this thing. We can actually kind of see it do some of its behaviors. We might see later in the game as we're playing. This is how it might fight. How it might play. How it might react. In fact, inside the theater in here, you see all these creatures on the walls. These were actually printed on a 3D printer, and it gives you some sense of the diversity of creatures that we can build in the game. Now we're going to pop out here and go into the uh, actual creature game that you're playing. Now this is a full world of creatures. Uh, it's actually populated with other things that other players have made on that. There's an entire ecosystem in the world here that we're playing in. And the computer is actually controlling these other creatures now. They were coming from our central server in a very compressed format. And these are the things that we're going to end up competing with at this part of the game. This is my creature right now, um, and I'm actually kind of directly controlling this guy in the world. And he has to kind of survive and eat. I'm going to run away from that guy. Okay. I want to be near the arrow. So basically, at this point in the game, I need to eat and get enough points where I can reproduce. So these guys are small. We can go on. Um, you don't have to necessarily be strong, you can actually have a pretty big advantage in the game just by being social. There's some food. I go that way. It's a harsh world right now. I'm going away from these guys. Oh, here's some herbivores. They sneak up on people. Ah, oh, yes. Right there, food. Yes. This is their nest, actually. Okay, I'm going to run away. <laughs> I did get some DNA points now, which will allow me to mate. So I'm going to go over to my species. These are my guys. Now, there's a whole social game where I can call these guys. So this one's ready to mate. I can tell by the little heart there. And this is what will get me back in the editor where I can start off two more because I'm like creature. <laughs> procedural mating. Eggs. And we're actually playing through every generation of evolution of these creatures. Uh, now 
we have to protect the eggs until they hatch. So the scavengers are going to have to be here. Now at this point, I can actually click on the eggs and go back to the other. The other. So this is the creature I was just now playing, so I'm going to improve it a little bit. You know, first of all, I want it to be faster, so I'm going to buy a bigger foot. Each one of these parts has an upgrade level. These little sliders over here are showing me kind of the performance of my creature. So how I design a creature and what I've, parts I use will determine the performance of my creature in the world. I'm going to give it a couple of arms as well and give it some claws so that it can make it fight a little bit better. I'm going to go to the hand panel. I'll put some claws on here. I want my creature to look a little scarier too. This creature looks just kind of uh, goofy, so I'm going to get a little bit meaner with my eyes here. Word. Yeah. Okay, now let's give it a little bit um, more interesting texture here. It's kind of got this clown suit on right now. I'm going to go for something that's a little darker. time in the editor or as little time as you like in these formations. Okay, this is my new creature, so I'm going to come back into the world with this creature. Now coming back into the world, I'm actually not a grown-up. I actually start as a baby. So this is the baby version of the creature I just designed. And these are my siblings. My parents. Now I can make friends by clicking on these guys and they will actually become part of my herd and we can work together as a group. So I get the little friendship sign. This is kind of like a friendship game in the sim. And now my little friends will follow me around the world. And we can kind of work together as a team. We can go in the way the neighbors. <laughs> if I do this long enough, the babies are going to get eaten. So I'm going to skip over this part of the game. Now, we're going to skip over several levels of the game here. Uh, we're skipping over the tribal game where our creatures become intelligent and they start building tribal tools, huts, and have a relationship with other tribes. Uh, there's an associated hut editor where you can design the hut um, of the creatures. Also, at some point, you can even design the flora of the game, change, you know, very, make very kind of imaginative worlds using that. Later, we go to the city game where we're, it's kind of a simple version of SimCity. We're designing their buildings, designing the city layout, and kind of the specialization of the city. There's a building editor as well as a city editor. Uh, eventually we get to the civ game where we're designing vehicles that we'll actually use to kind of crawl around the surface of the planet and interact with other civilizations. We're actually going to skip ahead to that phase right now. This is the, kind of the very end of the civilization games we're going to. Same species that we were playing before, same planet, uh, just much, you know, several hours later into the game. So, this is one of the cities that I've built for my creatures. You know, all the things you see on the screen here are, you know, creatable by the player and then automatically shared to the pollinated content. We actually have several different cities on this planet here. This is our home city. Now, at this portion of the game, which is the very end of the Civ game, uh, we're actually just about to get into the space game. So, at this point, for the first time, I can kind of click on my city hall and choose to purchase a UFO, which is what I end up playing the next level of the game. avatar for this portion of the game. So I can kind of visit other cities that I've you know, captured earlier in the Civilization game and kind of see a, some sense of the diversity of styles and vehicles and buildings. The UFO can be used for a lot of things. It's kind of like a very versatile tool. One of the things I can use the UFO for is collecting content. I can come down to the surface and use uh, my abduction tool and put things in my cargo bay and I can collect uh, creatures on the surface of the planet. I can use this content actually to you know, bring to other planets and use it to pollinate and build other worlds. We've actually found that we can use this abduction rate for throwing things um, pretty effectively. Um, and if you throw them just right, we can actually, we've got them in an orbit around the planet, which is really cool. So you can, 
So now we're pulling way out. This is the planet that, you know, up to now we've been playing on this planet the entire game. This is our home planet. And with UFO now, we can pull out the solar system for the first time. This is our so local solar system. We have a few planets in here. Uh, this one has life. I can tell with the sliders. Um, it doesn't have intelligence, but it has some kind of wildlife on it. So we're going to fly over here on the UFO. Looking on the surface. Now, not all the worlds are going to be, you know, super uh, kind of realistic. Some of them are going to be more imaginative, fantasy-based worlds. Uh, we want a huge amount of diversity, not just in the creatures, vehicles, and buildings, but also in the planets. So this is a biosphere that's already established to some degree. Um, we might want to build a colony here. We might actually even want to modify the biosphere to some degree on this planet. So we can kind of walk, you know, fly around and investigate a little bit and see what's looking around here. So now I might take the creature that I just uh, abducted and drop it on this planet and see how it does. Now I can investigate these things actually with my scanning tool. So I can scan different life forms on this planet and what I'm actually doing is I'm adding these things to my database, my UFO. Now the database is actually presented in the form of a card deck that we call Scorpedia. So for every piece of content that I encounter in the game and scan, we get a card, a trading card basically added. This is my home star and it actually has attached to it the planets around it. This is my home planet. This is the planet we're currently visiting. If I click the planet, it shows the species that I've currently scanned on the planet. And I can click on those. And each one has a rating that we can, you know, use in other formats. In fact, you know, you know like a trading card game. And the different ways to look at the data. I can actually look at all the creatures that I've encountered in the game so far. So a lot of these are from my home planet, my first creature, or the overboards I was bothering. So in essence, the database that we're building up as we explore the world is treated as a card deck. Um, and then we can do other games with it. So let's pull away from this planet now. Now we're back up to the solar system level. Now we can pull further back to the interstellar level of the game. So this is a region of interstellar space around our home star. And there are a lot of different kind of places we can visit here. Um, which later, as I upgrade my UFO, I'll have the ability to kind of jump around much further and much more cheaply by going through wormholes, which are black holes. So eventually this is something that's unlocked. It's kind of a new transit system for me. But right now, let's go back to another star. probably holds about a half a million stars that we're actually going to have. Each one will have an hour average of four planets. So there will actually be millions of planets that you can visit in this game. So this is an alien star system. Uh, we can visit the close planet here. This one's going to be very hot because it's close to the sun. So we're going to come down to the surface of this planet. So this is more of a lava-based world, which is going to be very difficult for you to terraform and colonize. There might be other reasons for me to explore it. Occasionally, even on barren planets, you might discover things that will actually help you with a photo. So I can actually come investigate what this is, pick it up. There are a large number of upgrades to the UFO, you know, which will give me increases in weapons, airplane ability, cloaking devices, all sorts of things that we're kind of pulling from science fiction to go into my specials catalog that I can use later in the game or even use in the trading game. So at the space game, you know, there are a lot of different metagames I can play involving exploration, trading, fighting, etc. So I'm going to pull away from here. There's really not much else on this planet right now. We're going to go over to this place, uh, which I can tell by the sliders, in fact, has intelligent life on it. And this is actually a moon. It's a moon of this gas giant here. Pull down to the surface here.
See, there's an alien civilization over here. Now these were actually created by some other player. The computer's now controlling them. And uh, a lot of different things I can do here diplomatically. I can try doing some fireworks just to see if I can trust them. So they like that. Diplomatically, I'm forming relationships with these guys, and depending on what I do and depending on their personality, it might go totally different ways. So at this point, they were so impressed with what I did, they're starting to worship me, come as a god. So I might decide to kind of pick one of these guys up. Duck in. Upset by that. They saw that as an impressive act, so they have planetary Thanks. Thank you.